Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV. Hello and welcome to Practical Caravan TV, your one-stop shop for all things caravanning. We've got an action-packed show for you this time with four great new caravan reviews, including a mighty twin axle from Coachman. We've also got our first look at Skoda's hotly anticipated new Superb. But first, I'm going to take a look at the much revamped Luna Lexon. Luna's Lexon name has been around for more than two decades, but it is always tricky for a middle range. It can get lost in a packed portfolio, and Luna's certainly is, ranging from the budget entry-level Venus brand right up to the twin axle Delta. So for 2016, the Lexon has had a big revamp, taking on a red theme for its graphics and a dramatic new interior. In spec terms, it's give and take. There's no gas barbecue point on the outside, but there is an external 230 volt socket and Alco ATC. I was talking to a dealer recently who said he really struggles with some of the brands of caravans he sells to put them inside the showroom because even with all the lights on it really is hard to make it feel lively and bright. However this Luna is a great example of a modern caravan with some fantastically thought out lighting options. So in the lounge here although we're in a show there's no show lighting above me or through the windows all of the brightness you can see generated here comes from the LEDs and spotlights. I really like the way they're recessed behind the cupboards so you get a nice atmospheric glow. And you get the same around the standard Skyview roof light, which should ensure there's plenty of light there during the day. Now earlier on, I mentioned the rather dramatic new upholstery. Now, it probably depends on your taste whether or not you like it. It's definitely growing on me after a while in here, but it's certainly quite an abrupt entry to the caravan. The slate grey of the bolsters and the seat squabs is picked up by these rather nice worktops and the same again in the kitchen. And of course this turns into a pretty large double bed when you pull out the slats beneath that front chest, although they're definitely too short to be used as singles. I've been pretty impressed by all of the kitchens I've seen in the Lexon so far and this 570 is no exception. It's really very spacious, there's masses of worktop and there's a pop-up extension should you need more. I really like these big cupboards, which incidentally is where you'll find the table, nice and close to the lounge, and alongside it there's a good sized fridge. Although this is a mid-spec van, you've got pretty much everything you'd find in a posher one. We've got a dual fuel hob, separate oven and grill, and of course a microwave, mounted quite high but safely above the worktop. On the near side, we've got a large wardrobe here, with four drawers beneath, and a little sideboard, which is an ideal place to put your TV. And of course, there's more attractive lighting options. Just look at the difference that these LED surround lights make. It really lifts the kitchen area. The 570 with its fixed twin single beds is one of the new layouts for 2016. Or more correctly, I should probably say it's one of the heavily revised layouts. Because of course, last year we had the Lexon 590, which had fixed twin singles, but with a central washroom. For the 570, the washroom has moved to its more familiar layout across the back of the van. And one thing's for sure, the occupants of this master bedroom are going to feel really well cared for. These beds are a fantastic size. They're six foot one inches long each, and more importantly, they're really nice and wide. Quite often, in this layout, they can feel very pinched. Each occupant gets a little shelf, and a reading light above, and of course a window. Opposite, there's a TV mount, and of course, all the relevant sockets. And above, there are these rather nice gloss-finished overhead lockers. Beneath the beds, there's storage on both sides with external access and, usefully, internal access using these long cupboard doors. You get the same underneath the front beds too. Moving into that washroom, it feels unusually spacious. There's a huge shower cubicle with some rather nice LED lighting, and in the centre, a backlit mirror and a vanity unit with a bowl sink. On the off side, you'll find the electric flush loo and a frosted window. At a quid under 20 grand, the Luna Lexon 570 isn't the cheapest van in its class. 
A Bailey Pegasus Rimini, for example, is about two grand less. However, it is impressively distinctive, both inside and out. It's got a spacious bedroom, and it's hugely improved by the layout tweaks that move the washroom to the back of the van. The first thing to notice about the new Skoda Superb is just how big it is. On the outside, it's similar in size to many executive saloons, but on the inside, it offers limo-like rear seat space. But don't just take my word for it. Come and have a look for yourself. Now, I'm six foot three, and the driver's seat has been set up for me to drive comfortably. And just look how much space I've got. I'm struggling to think of another £22,000 family hatchback that's anything like this roomy. So, it's clearly a very practical car. Now let's find out how well the Superb tows. Despite its generous dimensions, the Superb is quite a light car. Our 150 PS 2 litre diesel has a curb weight of 1,485 kilos, including 75 kilograms for the driver. That gives an 85% match figure of 1,262 kilos. We match the car to a Swift Expression weighing 1,325 kilograms. It may be quite light for a car of its size, but that hasn't compromised the Superb's ability to tow. It's very windy today and I can see the caravan moving from side to side in the mirrors, but there have been no nervous moments. The Superb had no trouble in the lane change test either. Despite a damp track and blustery winds, the manoeuvre was impressively undramatic, which is just the way we like it. In both towing and solo driving, we found comfort and stability to be best with the optional dynamic chassis control in normal mode. Comfort was too soft and sport too fidgety. There are more powerful engine options than the 150 PS diesel, but it has plenty of pulling power for towing any sensibly matched caravan. In fact, at times it almost feels too strong for its own good. In wet weather, with the weight of a caravan on the back, it's easy to spin the front wheels if you pull away from a junction too quickly. Use a gentle right foot and you can expect impressive fuel economy. The official combined figure is 68.9 mpg. We achieved 30.6 mpg while towing. We started out by noting how much space the Superb has for passengers. It's just as accommodating of luggage. It's hard to find any really big chinks in the Superb's armour. The Skoda is huge inside, it's keenly priced and it's a very stable tow car. It could do with being a little bit heavier for matching purposes, but otherwise the Superb lives up to its name. Just about the most fashionable layout this year is the island bed at the back of the van with a bathroom in the middle. And Coachman really got ahead of the trend with that, with this model, the Laser 650. It was launched in February last year as the Laser 654, and for 2016, it's been lightly revised to make it the Laser 650. The graphics are different with a new blue theme, which I actually think really suits it, and it's a really great looking van. I particularly like those nice solid roof rails and the really good quality feel to the construction with those strong grab handles. It costs a little over £26,500 and it weighs in at a hefty 1,810 kilos, so you're going to need a pretty big tow car. But that said, you do get an awful lot for your money. Outside there are things like an external gas barbecue point, an external mains point, and of course a full complement of Alco goodies with ATC, AKS hitch stabiliser and secure wheel locks. There are also hydraulic jacks and, as we're about to find out, a really superb interior finish. Now, bearing in mind that this is a large, heavy, twin-axle caravan, there's a good chance it's going to spend plenty of time on a seasonal pitch. And with that in mind, you expect a really domestic feel inside. And you certainly get it. This is a very grown-up feeling caravan. I particularly like these really quite muted fabrics, which have got a very pleasant oatmeal finish and thick bolsters at the corners that make them feel properly like sofas. There's a real solidity as well. Look at these thick shelves. They're much bulkier and more solid feeling than you get in a lot of tourists. That said, bearing in mind its size, this isn't the largest caravan in the whole world, but chances are it's going to be used by a couple and it'll be plenty roomy enough for them and a couple of friends to sit around and have their dinner. At night, the sofas can be turned into a pretty decent sized double bed, 
But the thing that really strikes you when you're sitting here is the depth of thought that's gone into this caravan. Every space has been utilised for storage, even the little corners where often you'd find a speaker. And although the cupboards don't have positive catches, they do have heavy springing, which means they shouldn't pop open when you're on the road. There's an access flap to get into the bed box from the inside. And one of the really nice things from where I'm sitting right now, I'm looking at directly at the perfect place to sight a TV, with a TV mount, a shelf, and of course, aerial points. And praise be, the table is stored in the lounge area, so you haven't got to lug it all the way from the back of the van when it's time for dinner. Now you'd really be hard pushed to complain about this kitchen. On the near side, there's a whopping 140 litre tower fridge freezer. And the kitchen itself has masses of storage space. Underneath there's cupboards and drawers, a couple of lockers overhead, and one of them, rather neatly, contains the microwave. I wish it wasn't directly over the hob, but other than that, no complaints. Now there's no worktop flap in this caravan, but you don't really need it. There's a good amount of workspace, and if you need more, the glass lid on the sink gives you a bit extra. Lift that up, and there's a proper drainer, which is a really nice thing to see instead of the usual flappy, removable affair. And of course, considering the fact that you're likely to be in this van for long periods of time, the fact that there's two sockets in the kitchen rather than one is great for those kettles and toasters. For many, a big part of the appeal of a Laser 650 is going to be this central washroom. It's a really appealing space. Roomier than you'll find on a single axle version, although not quite as spacious as that of the Luna Delta RI. But of course that has a transverse rear bed rather than an inline one as here. Here on the near side we've got a large circular shower cubicle which is, has slight intrusion from the wheel arch but not very much. And a towel rail heated by the Aldi wet central heating. In the centre there's a good sized sink with a vanity unit and a backlit mirror. But of course what if you're on the other side of the room and you want to use the bathroom at night? Well you just use this additional door and over here on the off side there's a toilet and a really large linen basket. Having come through your his and hers doorway, you arrive into a real master suite along with his and hers wardrobes. That's just one of the storage options in here. There are cupboards beneath, lockers above, and of course masses of space underneath the bed. But you want to be a little bit careful not to overload it, bearing in mind you're hung out right at the back of the caravan here, which could upset it on tow. The bed itself is a decent size. It's plenty wide enough, but if you're very tall, or at least well over six foot, you need to make sure that it's going to be long enough for you. It measures six foot one inches long, and of course there's a bulkhead at the foot of the bed, which means it can't have a bolster cushion to extend it. That bulkhead is the perfect place for your second TV, and of course you'll find a mount here, along with an aerial socket and a power point. With this layout, there are a lot of really space sapping features. That island bed and that central washroom ought to mean that there are an awful lot of compromises to be made. But one of the great things about being a big twin axle is that this Laser 650 never feels compromised. It feels really spacious in fact, helped by having plenty of lighting. If you can stump up that price tag and the thought of towing an 1800 kilo caravan doesn't intimidate you, there's really an awful lot to like about it. Swift's Conqueror line got a major revamp for the 2016 season moving it into the same Smart HT body shell as the flagship Elegance range. One thing that hasn't changed, however, is its target market of buyers seeking a little bit of luxury. As a result, fixed bed layouts are proving most popular, such as the Conqueror 580 behind me, which features a transverse island bed, so you haven't got to make it up every evening and take it down in the morning to have breakfast. It's got a full complement of Valco goodies, of course, including shock absorbers, ATC, an AKS stabiliser, and a secure wheel lock receiver, although you have to pay extra to get the lock itself. It's part of a very, very high specification, a shade lower than the Elegance, perhaps, but it's unlikely that you're going to feel shortchanged. You've got a gas barbecue point, an external 230 volt socket, heavy duty steadies, which are all easy to get at, and a Thule bike rack receiver on the back. It looks pretty good as well with this streamlined front, which still features a good sized gas locker with very stylish graphics on the side. But does the interior live up to that exterior promise? Well, first impressions are pretty good. I can't imagine many people feeling shortchanged by the amount of kit in this van. We've got that huge sunroof overhead, making it nice and bright inside. We've got 
a swift command for remote control system for all the internal electrics. We've got access to the lockers underneath, both inside and outside. And underneath me, there's the boiler for the Aldi wet central heating system. So all the luxury boxes are being ticked. I can't help feeling it's a little bit, how can I put it? Well, beige in here, particularly these plastics. But that said, it's pretty neutral and inoffensive. These sofas are probably not long enough to be used as single beds, unfortunately, unless it's by kids, but they do make up into a really good sized double bed for visitors. Swift has used the fixtures and fittings to create a good visual separation between the lounge area and the kitchen. We've got this sort of hessian effect on the cupboards instead of the high gloss two-tone wood. And these rather than fetching Phoenix worktops, which look really good and feel really solid, which is quite an unusual thing in a caravan. The countersunk sink is a nice touch too, and there's a good sized worktop flap which pops up should you need extra space. I like the fact that the microwave is stationed largely over the sink rather than directly over the hob, and the hob itself is a dual fuel with three gas burners and an electric hot plate. Underneath, you'll find a separate oven and grill, and on the other side, a large tower refrigerator, which is a good size, plenty for the two people that are likely to buy this van, even though it is a four berth. I really like these large drawers as well, really good size, plenty of space for storing things. But it does feel slightly enclosed in here, doesn't it? Well, we can get away with that by simply opening this screen and it turns it into a large open plan living space. And of course, for many, the main event is back here, this transverse island bed. It's one of the classic retracting type. So at the moment it's in its retracted mode, which means there's a good amount of space to get past it to go to the toilet at night. Even when extended, however, it only runs to six feet long, which isn't massive, and you do have the compromise of having to squeeze around the foot of the bed. One thing I do really like about this room, however, is this vanity unit. It's a proper dressing table. A mirrored cabinet at the top, just ideal for doing my makeup. A good space to store your toiletries, or indeed a telly, because underneath we've got an aerial 12 volt and two 230 volt sockets. That's six in total in the van so far. There's a good sized cupboard underneath as well. And if you're looking for storage, well, there's masses in here. We've got a large wardrobe on this side, matched by a smaller one on the other side. Little shelves for your cups of tea and drawers underneath, plus two overhead lockers. And of course, beneath this bed, there's a massive space for storing all your gear. Though you want to be a little bit careful not to overload it when you're on the road. It's also a shame that the end wall is such an unremitting expanse of wood effect a little mirror or perhaps a picture would lift it a huge amount. In the washroom, there are plenty of places to store your toiletries, in the cupboard under the sink and the wall of shelves and cupboards beside the toilet. I like the fact that the shower cubicle is fully lined and has two plug holes, so it should drain even if you haven't got the van perfectly pitched. It's not the most spacious feeling washroom though, and could be a bit brighter despite the roof light and the frosted window. At 1,650 kilos, and just a fiver shy of 26,000 pounds, this Conqueror represents a significant investment and quite a heft to tow. That said, that's a 50 kilo saving and a two grand saving over the flagship Elegance. And if you're inside, it's hard to see where any corners have been cut. The one thing that is interesting, however, is for 2016, Swift has added two island bed models to its Conqueror range, this 580 and the 560, which features a central washroom and a rear island bed. I guess it's horses for courses which one you prefer. My preference is for that central washroom which feels a lot more open and bright, but I think the only way for you to decide is to take a look at both. Open all year round, Bath Chew Valley Caravan Park in the hamlet of Bishop Sutton in northeastern Somerset is a relatively small site with just 45 touring pitches but it's perfectly formed if you're looking for a quiet place to stay in attractively landscaped grounds. It's open to adults only, which should ensure plenty of peace and quiet, and boasts some of the finest luxury bathroom suites we've encountered on a campsite. No wonder it's a multiple winner of the annual Top 100 Sites Guide. We're Bathtree Valley Caravan Park. We're a 45 pitch adults only touring park located in between Bath and Bristol, Wells and Cheddar. Uh, I've, we've been here since 2004, it's been in the family since uh, 1998. All pitches are hard standing, with some fully serviced, and there's powerful 16 amp electric hookup. 
while members of the two main caravanning clubs can enjoy a £1 per night discount. As the only five star park in the county, we have a wide variety of facilities. Our washrooms are very popular, they're in the style of ensuite shower rooms. So each one has an external door with its own shower, sink, loo, hand dryer, hair dryer, and a shaver point. And because it has its own external door, you're in a completely private room, separate from any other guests. One of the washrooms is also disabled adapted, so it has uh, bars for support, low level sink and a wheelchair accessible shower. Some of the approach roads are tight if you have a particularly large outfit, but upon arrival the friendly and helpful staff will unhitch your van and place it on your pitch, from where you can enjoy a lengthy list of facilities, including a large lending library, a free internet kiosk, a dog walking space, free clothes drying and ironing facilities, and a complimentary freezer service. We have an acre of woodland which we planted in 2006, with a variety of walks through it, with nature themed exhibits throughout. If the weather isn't as sunny as you might hope during your stay, there's lots to do in the area. Both Bristol and Bath have got large shopping centres, as well as cinemas and theatres. Some top tips about our park. Uh, for caravanners on arrival, we'll actually unhitch a caravan for you, tow it to the pitch and level it, and even set up your wheel locks if you tell us you've got them. For motorhome owners, we also provide a hire car from reception, which is available by the hour, so you can take it out in an evening, just for an hour or two, to go to a restaurant, which is just £4 an hour, or you can have it for a longer period, such as uh, six hours during a day is very popular, which is just £15. That's my first time here at Bath Chew. Um, the facilities are very, very good. You always judge a caravan size on the, on the facilities. I mean, the toilet block is, 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 is spotless, including the uh, disposable waste. The unit is very, is very, very clean. And they, they site your caravan for you. It's probably one of the best sites I've been on for a long, long time. This is the Sprite Freedom FB. It's part of Sprite's new Freedom range which is a no-frills range of caravans designed to appeal to families on a budget. So what figures do you need to know if you're on a budget? Well, how much space it's got, how much it weighs, and how much it costs. Price-wise, it's pretty good value. It comes in at a shade under £16,000. And weight-wise, for a twin axle, it's incredibly light at 1,466 kilos. As for space, well, the only way we can find that out is to climb aboard. Well, if it's space you're looking for, this is a pretty great place to start. This lounge is absolutely massive. Unlike a lot of six berth caravans, this lounge really does seat six people, or possibly even eight at a push. It's a great place to sit and lounge, or indeed to dine in the evenings. And to do that, you just grab a freestanding table from the kitchen, where it lives in a little open locker. And at night, you simply pull out the slats between them, and it turns into a pretty massive double bed. But apart from that, what else do you get? Well, not a huge amount, to be honest. There are flaps beneath the sofas to give you access to the bed boxes, although this one is rather taken up by the electrical unit and the Truma boiler. But elsewhere, there's very little in the way of extras, just like on the outside, where you get a bare hitch head, hubcaps instead of alloy wheels, and a single pane front window. But then, of course, you're not paying for extras. You're paying for space. Now, in all good houses, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And I think that plays out perfectly here in this Sprite Freedom FB. This is a really fantastic family space. There's a dinette on the offside, perfect place for kids to play or indeed to sit and have their breakfast if you've made up the front beds. And of course on the near side there's a massive kitchen. You're going to get lost trying to use up all that worktop. There's a huge sink and as for storage, well we've got two cupboards here, two cupboards here, one two, three, and a drawer. Masses of space. You really are going to be able to get tons of food in there. There's a good sized fridge, but of course there has to be the odd drawback, and here it's the cooking. There's no microwave, there's only a three burner gas hob, and no oven at all, just a grill. And just one plug socket. Now, plenty of six berth caravans tend to be used by families of four, who appreciate that extra flexibility. But if there are six of you, the dinette forms a couple of bunk beds with a curtain that can be pulled around for privacy. And don't worry, if you buy it, it does come with cushions. Behind it here, you'll find an enormous wardrobe which has masses of full-height hanging space 
to go along with the six overhead lockers in the kitchen and the lounge. But for many, the real appeal of this caravan lies back here. In a six berth family tourer, a proper double fixed bed is really quite a luxury and this is a pretty good one. It features a Duvalet Duvalite mattress, which is a great news considering that this is a budget model. And of course you get masses of storage space underneath. In this van, it's also where you'll find the spare wheel. Up above is the sole TV point in this caravan with a bracket that means you can turn it to face out into the van or back here. And on the other side, you'll find a sink and a vanity unit, which gives you some kind of clue as to the size of the washroom. Tucked away in a corner, it's more of a wet room than a washroom and it has no window. That said, there is an electric flush toilet and a shower with a moulded tray and a neat little moulded soap dish. If you're looking for a bit of luxury, then you should perhaps shop elsewhere. If, however, you're a cost-conscious family on a tight budget, this is perhaps the perfect layout. For me, it's the pick of the Freedom Range. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but don't miss next week's show when we'll be taking a look at a couple of luxurious heavyweights from Buccaneer and Adria. In the meantime, you can keep up with us via Facebook or on our website, and don't forget that after the break, you can catch up with all of the motorhome news from Practical Motorhome TV. Until next week, bye-bye. Truma, makers of the combi heater and iNet system, are proud to sponsor Practical Caravan TV.